Hey folks, we're going to be tying up a new uh, worm that I've been tying lately. It's an all glass bead worm. It's a great alternative when chenille worms are too light and uh, you need to get down deep where you got fast moving water. I'm going to start off with some Daiichi 1120 scud hooks. It's a size 12. There's other brands out there. This is what I happen to have. It works great. Uh, Danville's 6 aught 70 denier in red. The glass beads are an 8 aught glass bead. You can get them very inexpensively at craft stores. You can get probably five times more per package than a lot of other places. Uh, tough line braid, 20 pounds. You can go down to 12. Works just as well. I don't use monofilament for this because. Uh, you know, it's not, it's in the heavier monofilaments that you need. It's just uh, not flexible enough for this application. Uh, the braid works great. It's super strong, and you'll see it works out really well. We just lay down a quick thread wrap down the shank of the hook. Nothing real special here. A couple whip finishes. You can actually take that and uh, leave it there, set it aside. You only need about six inches at most, five inches of the braided line. I'm going to thread a bead through, and this is going to be our stopper. It's our tail bead, just like that. And then what I do, and I've already done this, thread seven more beads on your bobbin threader. And you can run your braid line through there. Come on, oops, you don't drop it. Let's try that again. Braided line through. There we go. Take your seven beads, pull it, boom. And you now have it's the fastest way of putting seven beads onto a length of the line. Bobbin threaders are the way to go. Uh, now we need four more beads, and we're going to put those on the hook. That's probably the funnest part of the whole operation. Get four beads on the hook, and then the hook back in the lace, just like that. There we go. Now we're going to take a braided line. We're going to thread the braid through those beads in the body of the hook, or down along the shaft of the hook. Come on. There they go. Just like that. I only run through three. Leave that head bead right at the at the uh, eye of the hook. And back to thread. Or take my first wraps between that last and the second to last bead on the shank here. And then we can adjust the braided line from there. We need a little bit of slack so that we can keep these beads free moving, but we need to keep it tight enough that they don't flop off to the side. And we also need to be able to keep things loose enough that we can get all the all the rest of the thread we're throwing in here to really lock this down really well. This is just about right. Time some more. Let my tag in wrap around the main line or the main thread a few times and then continue tying. That really helps kind of lock it into place. You know we're not being we're not able to do a lot of over wrapping on this, so it's important to make sure you've got your base really nailed down. Whip finish. Great. Got to clip that off earlier. I 
learned my lesson on this one before. I just seem to have forgotten. There we go. Tighten that down. Braided line's really rough stuff. When you're cutting it, if you use your good scissors, cut way down at the bottom. There we go. So that's the back half. I'm going to come up to the front. Tie it in there. Let that twist up a bit. Really well locked down. Finish. Still looking nice and flexible there. Yeah. It's okay to go tight at the beginning because you can loosen it up a little bit as you go. Once you get this last one though, you're pretty much stuck with that, with the tension that you have to begin with. And this is just Perfect. I said fish this into some deep water. All these glass beads will really help this get down. If you're fishing high flows, this is going to stay underneath your indicator or your uh, your hopper that's floating at the surface. And that's it. And that's my glass bloodworm. You see that tail? Nice and flexible. Uh, it's going to move around in the water. Those beads are likely going to rattle around in the water as well. Uh, it's a great, great fly to tie, real easy to tie, even better to fish. Plenty of trout are going to be picking these up on a stream or river or lake near you. Check them out sometime. Real easy to do. Thanks.